Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asian News and early top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday. Former PM Imran Khan's close aid alleged undeclared martial law imposed in Pakistan. And petition filed in Nepal's Supreme Court challenging only his appointment as president. And now for all. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh took stock of counter terror operations as he encountered an anchor in India's general. The joint operation by the Army and JNK police was launched in the Desa forest belt of Doda district on Monday based on intelligence inputs about the presence of terrorists in the region. Contact with terrorists was established at night at about 2100 hours in which heavy firefight ensued, the statement said, adding that additional troops were mobilized into the area. Initial reports suggest that four Army personnel identified as Captain Brijesh Thapa Nayak D. Rajesh, Sepoy Bijendra, Sepoy Ajay and a JNK police official were killed in action during the encounter. According to media reports, the terrorists involved in the encounter are affiliated with the Pakistan-based terror outfit jesh e Mohammed's proxy, Kashmir Tigers. Notably, the same outfit was also involved in the attack on an army convoy in JNK's Katua district earlier this month. Defence experts have said recent attacks in the largely peaceful Jammu region highlights Pakistan frustration who wants to disrupt the normal scene in India's JNK. This is not just one operation. We, we, uh, such incidences have been occurring now for the last two to three months. And I think this continuous occurrence of such incidences, that is a, that is a cause for serious concern. In my view, it is quite apparent that one, the people who are coming in are not terrorists. They are regular personnel of the Pakistan Army. They are their commandos. No, that is one. Number two, I am quite certain that they have got adequate internal support from elements within that, within that area. So there are some villagers or some other people who are providing them the intelligence and the local support. That much is evident. Moving on. Taking cognizance of India-Russia relations, the U.S. on Monday urged New Delhi to utilize ties with Moscow and tell Russian President Vladimir Putin to end the ongoing war against Ukraine. U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller in a press conference urged India to tell Putin to respect the U.N. Charter. Certainly, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in Russia for two days for the 22nd India-Russia Annual Summit that was watched closely by the West amidst the raging Ukraine conflict. During his talks with Vladimir Putin, PM Modi called peace most important for future generations. He said that there is no solution on the battlefield and added that peace talks do not succeed amid bombs, guns and bullets. India has always advocated peace and diplomacy for resolving conflict between Ukraine and Russia but continued to purchase Russian oil. And hours after the Pakistan government announced its decision to impose a ban on the jailed former Premier Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf PTI, the opposition party alleged that such actions demonstrate an undeclared martial law in Pakistan. Khan's close aide Zulfikar Bukhari said the government's decision is a knee-jerk reaction to recent court verdicts in favour of the PTI Supremo. He added that such actions by the Sharif government only demonstrate what they have been saying earlier, that there is absolute fascism in Pakistan. The opposition party has alleged that the government wants to scare the public through coercion, intimidation and harassment and has said no positive outcome can be expected from it. On Monday, the Pakistan government had announced the move to ban Khan's PTI, citing charges of the party receiving foreign funds from sources considered illegal in Pakistan and writing by its supporters last year that targeted military installations. The government will also file a legal reference against Khan and former President Arif Alvi for treason charges under the country's constitution before the Supreme Court. The recent press conference by the Information Minister is obviously a knee-jerk reaction 
to what has been happening in the courts. The courts, uh, in the courts, Pakistan Tariq Saf has won two back-to-back -back victories, one in the reserved seats and one in the illegal marriage case, the Iddid case, where Imran Khan and his wife, Pusha Bibi, were ordered by the judge uh, to be released immediately. But illegally, both of them were rearrested. So hence, this has caused no worry to uh, PTI. It is only demonstrated of what we have been trying to say earlier, that there is absolute fascism in Pakistan. There is an undeclared martial law in Pakistan. Meanwhile, people in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir staged a protest, voicing their concerns against the congestion of roads attributing to traffic jams and significant health risk. A report. Residents in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir recently held a protest against the congestion of roads disrupting their daily lives. The protesters lamented the plight of school children who endured daily traffic snarls on their way to and from school. They further highlighted the perilous condition of the roads attributing to numerous accidents and fatalities to their deteriorated state. The protesters have voiced their concerns over the lack of road widening citing frequent traffic jams that not only raise dust levels but also pose significant health risks. There have been several protests over these issues in recent months, but Islamabad has continued to ignore people's plight. और इसके ऊपर जो हैवी ट्रैफिक चलती है जिसकी वजह से बारहा इसकी सेवरेज भी तबाह हो गई है और रोड भी तबाह हो गई है इस हैवी ट्रैफिक को बंद किया जाए और सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जो एकमात दिए हुए हैं वो ये है कि ये जो श्वाई नाला है यहाँ से सिर्फ लूज मटेरियल को उठाया जाए लेकिन कुछ लोग जो है मशीनें लगा के जो पहाड़ों की कटिंग कर रहे हैं इसको भी बंद कर होना चाहिए जिससे मालियाती मालियाती आलूदगी फैल रही है और लोगों के अंदर जो बीमारियाँ हैं वो फैल रही हैं Locals long blame that while Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to the occupied territory, elected officials have no say in policy making and people are denied even basic fundamental rights. Moving on. The Chinese research vessel Xiangyang Hong 3 is on its way to the Maldives, local media reports have suggested. The ship has made at least two port calls in the island country in 2024 amid India's growing concern over China's activity in the Indian Ocean region in recent years. There is no statement yet from the Moldavian government regarding whether the ship is expected to dock at its port. The vessel left the Chinese port of Xiamen on 3rd of July and is scheduled to return on 28th of August. Days after Moldavian President Mohammad Muizu completed his first official foreign visit to China, Malay announced it will give the Xiangyang Hong 3 permission to dock at Moldavian ports. India has been unhappy with both Sri Lanka and Maldives, allowing the Xiangyang Hong 3 to dock in its port. Termed as research vessels, the information collected by such ships can be used for both civilian and military purposes. While Chinese vessels have been around to dock in Maldives, its government last December decided not to renew the hydrographic agreement with India. And thousands of riot police fanned out at university campuses across Bangladesh on Tuesday, a day after protests against a quota system for government jobs turned violent and more than 100 people were injured in the South Asian nation. Violence erupted on Monday when thousands of anti-quota protesters clashed with members of the student wing of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's Awami League party during a demonstration against the remarks over the student protest. Sporadic violence was also reported on Tuesday with students blocking railways and major highways. Protesters have planned more marches and rallies nationwide, with the student wing of the main opposition, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, also calling for marches on Wednesday to demonstrate against Monday's attack on protesting students. Protest had begun earlier this month when the High Court ordered the government to reinstate the 30% job quota. The Supreme Court suspended the order last week for a month, but protests continued and intensified after Hasina refused to meet the students' demands, citing ongoing court proceedings. Moving on. A writ petition was filed in Nepal's Supreme Court on Monday challenging the appointment of CPN UML Supremo 
K.P. Sharma Oli as the Prime Minister of Nepal. Filed ahead of Oli's oath ceremony on Monday, the petitioners sought annulment of the appointment, terming it unconstitutional. The petitioner argued that since the Dehel government, which was formed as per Article 76.2 of Nepal's constitution, failed the flow test, President Ramchandra Podil should have called for the formation of a new government under Article 76.3. Notably, President Portal had appointed Oli as the Premier under Article 76.2 after he submitted signatures from 165 lawmakers in his support. Article 76.2 of the Constitution of Nepal allows the President to appoint a Prime Minister who is able to command a majority in Parliament with the support of multiple parties. The petitioners have demanded that the appointment to the top office should be made under Article 76.3, which mandates the President to appoint the leader of the biggest party in Parliament as the Prime Minister. Nepal's election held in 2022 resulted in a hung Parliament, with Oli's UML being the second largest party. He has joined hands with the Nepali Congress, the biggest party in Parliament, to form the government. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.